Hey there, I'm Izzy from izzyvideo.com. Today I wanna to share with you a motion tip. Apple's Motion is an amazing app to me. I'm constantly blown away by everything it can do, especially when you consider how low of a price it has. Today's Motion tip is something that can save you some time when you're working in Motion. It can also save you some energy, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. Let's get started. Here I am working in Motion, and I have a very basic template I'm working on. You can see there's text here in the foreground, and then there's a cloudy white shape in the background with reduced opacity so you can see through it. Well, it occurs to me that somebody using this template, it would be very beneficial to them if they could adjust the opacity of this text background so that they could increase the opacity, make it more solid if there's, for example, a darker video clip behind it so there's more separation, or they could reduce it. Anyway, I want them to be able to have control. So the question is, how can we do that? Well, of course, we could just reduce the opacity or change the opacity on an individual basis. So for example, I could go into my scene two here, go to my text group, and here's text background. I could adjust the opacity either in the HUD here, or I could adjust the opacity here in the inspector like this. So you can see I can make it very opaque. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo to go back to its original value. I could do it one by one like this, but that's not very efficient. So another thing I could do is I could actually work on multiple layers at the same time. So for example, I could do a search and because I've named them all very well, I can type text background. Don't even have to complete it. Now what I can do is just command click on each of these text background layers like this. And because they're all the same value right now, I can adjust all of them here in the inspector together. You can see the inspector shows me multiple selected. So I could just grab this and adjust the background opacity just like this, all at the same time for all the different layers. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that too. The issue is who's gonna really wanna do that? Who's gonna wanna select all of the different layers, run the search and all that, and then adjust the opacity of all of them together? That doesn't make sense. So a better use of time is to set up one slider and then attach the opacity parameters of all these different layers to that one slider, and you can do that in motion. So let me just reset this. I'll close this down. Let's create a new object. I'm gonna go up to the object menu and choose new rig. Let me move the HUD out of the way here. You can see you have three different widgets that you can have be part of your rig. You can have a slider, a pop-up menu, or a checkbox. For this, we're using a slider because we wanna be able to slide that opacity value up and down. So I'll go ahead and add the slider. Here it is. You can see here it is right here, the slider. It doesn't do anything yet. I'm just gonna move it all the way up to 100 right now. And you can see it's marked as there's a state. And then if I move it all the way down to the lowest value, there's another state. I'm gonna increase it all the way up. So now we'll call this the first state. And something I like to do with every widget is I like to give it a custom name. So I'm gonna double click on it here in the layers list and I'll type text background opacity. Okay, so now it's gonna be very easy to know what that widget does, but it doesn't actually affect anything yet because we haven't connected the parameters, those op opacity parameters of the different text backgrounds. So how do we do that? Well, there's more than one way to do it. I'll show you this way. You can just go into what's called rig edit mode. I'll just click this start button here that's associated with this widget. Now any changes I make to any parameters are gonna be added to this widget. So let's find our scene two text background. It's right here. Move the HUD out of the way again. I'll just slide it down. And now I'm gonna increase the opacity all the way up to 100. You can see it's very solid now. Let's go back to our widget and see if it's made any changes. So I'll just select it here and you can see, sure enough, no changes added at all. But watch what happens when I choose Stop Rig Edit Mode. When I click this button, now what happens is anything I adjusted, which in this case was just the one value of the one parameter, I increased the opacity all the way up to 100, you can see it's added here. So it's attached to this widget. So now this slider can control that one. Now one thing you will notice is that when I go all the way down to zero like this here, it's only going down to 27.01% there because that's what the original state was. We'll fix that here in a minute. Right now I'm just gonna move this all the way back up to 100 again. Let's add another parameter for one of the other elements. So let's go to scene three now. I'll select it here, the text background, and let's move the playhead over it so we can see what's going on here, scene three, and we want that to be more solid. We wanna connect it to the widget we already created. Here's another way to do it. So we can just go to the opacity parameter here, go to the animation pop-up menu to the right of the parameter, click it, go to add to rig, then choose your rig, and then choose add to text background opacity. That's the name of the widget. So I'm gonna click that, you can see there's a little joystick that appears here that lets you know that that's being controlled now by the widget. And you can see it's still at 27.01%. Let's go take a look at the widget just to see what it's showing. So here it is, I've selected it. There it is, text background copy, the opacity parameter, it's at 27.01%. Let's go ahead and increase that all the way to 100, just like that. And now let's go to the next scene. So I'm gonna choose scene four, text background. I'll move the playhead forward so we can see it a little bit better. 
Now I'm going to show you my favorite way to add a parameter to the widget. And I think it's also pretty much the fastest if you know about it. And that is you just drag and drop. So I'm going to grab this parameter and drop it right on the text background opacity widget. And boom, now it's been attached to that widget. And I could do the same thing for scene five here. I'll just grab it, drag that opacity right up on top, let go. And then let's do the same thing for scene six. I'll grab that text background, same thing here, drop it right on top of that. So now I've connected that opacity parameter for those three additional layers to this widget. So now I'll select the widget. You can see here they are, and I'm just gonna drag them over to make them 100% so that when this is 100%, these will be 100%. Now I'll move all this down to zero, and let's reduce all these to zero too. So now I have two different states. I have this, we'll call this state number one, which is zero, and we have this state number two, which is 100, and then motion will calculate the values in between those two. So now I have this one slider that controls all of the opacity parameters for those five different elements, all with the one slider. But there's one more important step in my opinion, and that is that it's a good idea to publish this. And publishing means that this parameter, this slider will be available in Final Cut Pro directly. So the way you do that is you just go here, go to publish, now, if I save this as a template, it'll be available in Final Cut Pro, including this slider. So somebody using this template could very easily just make adjustments to the slider, depending on what their personal preference is. I think this idea of controlling the opacity of several different elements with one slider, I think it's a great example of how you can use a widget to save time and energy when you're working in Motion or Final Cut Pro. Whether you're making templates for yourself to use or for someone else, there's no doubt that widgets can really come in handy in motion, so I encourage you to give them a shot. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. Make sure you check out izzyvideo.com for more tutorials. I'll talk to you again soon.